When it comes to data analyst jobs, there's not just one single profile that makes up every single job. Rather, there's a lot of different niche areas that you can work in in data analytics, depending on your background, specialty, and interest. Today, we're gonna look at four unique data analyst jobs with very different specialties and focus areas. Hi, I'm Jen. I help people build analytics skills and careers with new videos every week. Check out the video description for more resources. Data analysts translate numbers into practical terms so that other people in the business can make use of them and make decisions based off of them. Every business collects data, whether that's just sales figures or whether it includes market research and other detailed figures about what's happening in the business and around the business. A data analyst's job is to take all of that data and help a company be more productive and more profitable by interpreting it correctly. While the central work or objective may be the same across every data analyst job, the specific types of data and even the tools that you'll use in different jobs can vary pretty drastically. Let's look at four unique data analyst jobs and how the tools and activities differ from job to job. The first job that we'll look at is a marketing analyst. As the name implies, marketing analysts are responsible for looking at collecting and understanding marketing data to improve a company's marketing efforts. Whether that's a digital marketing analyst like we talked about a few weeks ago, or in general, a marketing analyst dealing with every aspect of marketing and branding for an organization, people in this role will focus heavily on specific skills and specific tools that might not be as prevalent in other areas. They focus on cost and effectiveness of social media campaigns and regular advertising or local advertising campaigns, as well as things like brand awareness that might be more impactful as you get into a larger company, where the objectives of an advertising campaign might not necessarily be to sell a specific product or service, but to create awareness so that when someone is ready to buy, that brand immediately comes to mind. Marketing analysts will look at how effective each different strategy and platform that's used happen to be for the company and the particular types of campaigns. They'll be asked to determine which ones are more effective and how marketing campaigns should be tweaked going forward to make them more cost effective and more profitable overall for the organization. Marketing analysts often work with marketing departments. At really small organizations, a marketing analyst may actually be the entire marketing department. It may not even be a marketing analyst title, but that job may be rolled into the one person responsible for marketing the company. So they'd be responsible for the creative direction of the advertisements, as well as from the technical side, analyzing what works the best to what doesn't work as well and determining the best path forward from both a technical and a creative standpoint. Marketing analysts also need to be increasingly social media savvy. We're seeing so much of traditional marketing moving to online platforms. So marketing analysts need to be familiar with which platforms make the most sense for a brand, what strategies work on different platforms, what works on YouTube is probably not going to work the same on Instagram, which is not gonna work the same on Facebook. And the audiences that they're reaching are going to be very different. Even within individual platforms, launching an ad campaign that just targets general usage of the platform looks very different than segmenting different audiences that are more likely to be in the target market for the company. So these are all things that marketing analysts bring value in. In terms of the tools they use, because so much of marketing is online, Google Analytics and Google Ads would be very typical tools that would be used, but they would also be expected to know how to use retargeting efforts and retargeting tools on other platforms. Marketing analysts could come from a general data analyst background, but it's also pretty normal to see transition from business analyst roles, sales analyst roles, 
or even people that are in marketing already transition into this technical role with this marketing specialty. Check out the recent video I made on digital marketing analysts for more details about this specific position. The demand for data analysts is expected to increase by four to six times faster than the national average in the US over the next 10 years. Get the detailed guide to build your data analyst career. The second unique type of data analyst role is a sales analyst. Sales analysts evaluate and identify trends in sales figures. Sounds obvious, right? Sales analysts have a lot of the same objectives that we just talked about with marketing analysts. So they want to look at what's effective, what's working, what type of customers tend to convert, but they're not necessarily just dealing with the marketing end. In some cases, they will deal with marketing, but they'll also likely be more involved in what customers become repeat customers and how do you expand sales? If you're a retail organization, how do you target customers to buy additional items? You see this happening when you go on Amazon. If you're shopping for a specific item, a lot of times you'll get a suggestion for other items that you might like. These are things that a sales analyst might do. They're looking for opportunities to increase the revenue, increase the profitability by looking at other avenues to sell. Sales analysts will also often do competitive market analysis to look at general trends in the market. How do you stay competitive compared to other players or adjust to what's going on around you? And then taking those as recommendations to the business on what to change or potentially even what type of market could be most beneficial given the current environment. Sales analysts also deal with customer relationships. Customer relationship management softwares, otherwise known as CRMs, are very common and becoming increasingly used no matter the size of the business. These help create a cohesive experience to the end customer. They keep track of who's contacted the customer, what kind of pricing levels or discounts they're on, and manage the entire relationship with a customer. Sales analysts often are well-versed in the CRMs that their particular company is using. Salesforce is one of, if not the biggest CRMs on the market. And even within Salesforce, they have their own analytics platform that would definitely be used by a sales analyst. Salesforce's Einstein analytics allow them, allow the user to take all of this information that's been gathered about the customer, the interaction with them, when they buy, uh, what type of discounts have been offered, to analyze what things are working, what things aren't working, which customers might need a little more attention than others, and modifications that could be made to, again, increase profitability of the organization. There are even roles that are specific specifically Salesforce data analysts that exclusively specialize in using the Salesforce Einstein analytics. People that get into sales analyst roles, again, may come from a general data analyst background, but they also often may come from a sales background or even a marketing background where they want to make the shift to a more technical role, but they really benefit from having the hands-on experience of doing sales or marketing efforts in understanding the data and understanding the terms and what tends to work and a little more of the creative direction or the less technical direction of that aspect of the business. The third niche area of data analysts is a healthcare data analyst. Healthcare data analysts deal with all of the data around health and healthcare, including hospital performance, doctor performance, as well as prescription drug performance and what things work, which patients tend to have reoccurrence of different issues, and what preventative measures might be the most useful. Even within healthcare analytics, you'll often see people in niche areas. So a clinical data analyst in healthcare is going to be focused on things like prescription drugs and FDA approval if you're in the US or whatever your governing body is that manages which drugs are approved for use and which ones aren't. On the other hand, as I mentioned, you'll see analysts in hospitals or hospital networks that look at which doctors and which hospitals are more effective, what tactics tend to be more effective. 
And you could also see people in the pricing end of healthcare. So somebody that's even part of a marketing healthcare data analyst role, or the best way to price different prescription and non-prescription drugs based on everything else in the market and the unique selling points of that drug. Regardless of the niche though, most people that get into healthcare data analytics have some background in healthcare. Whether they worked in a healthcare environment or they have a training that's more healthcare related, this is an industry that prioritizes specialized knowledge. So someone that's just a general data analyst is going to have a little bit of a harder time breaking into a healthcare analyst role unless they've spent some time studying the specifics of healthcare because there are such large consequences depending on the role of the work that's done, whether that's potentially huge fines if the data submitted for drug approval is done incorrectly, or whether the consequences are patients are funneled towards different providers. If you're interested in healthcare analytics, the programming languages that you learn as a data analyst or data scientist may be a little bit different than what most people learn. So while Python is the most popular language overall, SAS is the dominant language and tool in the healthcare sphere, especially if you're looking at anything on the clinical side, where it's heavily used for calculations that are necessary to submit for FDA approval. This doesn't mean that there aren't roles that use Python, R, and some of the other languages. It just means there's less of them than that use SAS, whereas in the general population, SAS isn't going to be quite as popular across the board in any type of data analyst role. The fourth unique type of data analyst role is a data visualization analyst. This is a role that's relatively new and we've seen it cropping up more and more. These are people that tend to specialize in tools like Tableau or Power BI and leverage data in a visual form. Ideally in this role, you tend to be a more creative or artistic person because it's not just about sharing the numbers, it's about making things really visually appealing, simplifying as much as possible to still communicate the entire message. Think about the best data visualizations you've seen. They've probably actually been some of the simplest. By simplest, I don't mean plain or boring. What I mean is they've managed to condense a lot of complex information into a relatively straightforward visualization that makes it very easy to understand what it's talking about and doesn't look really cluttered. That's a hard skill to master, to communicate everything that you need, but make it seem so straightforward that it feels very intuitive to understand. People that are in data visualization analyst roles have mastered this, are great at visualizing and communicating using a more visual platform versus just a plain charter graph or communicating verbally or in more written form, lacking a little bit of the, the visual aspect. Most analyst roles are going to require some amount of this anyway, but there are roles that are specifically focused just around this very specific aspect of analytics. Data visualization analysts can work with a variety of tools. It's certainly possible to do great visualizations with Python, R, SAS, and a lot of other languages. Typically though, people in a data visualization analyst role are going to tend more to be required to use tools like Tableau that are centered specifically around the visualization. However, knowing additional tools that have even more flexibility to how you customize them will strengthen your position. You may also find these roles that exist in more of a journalism capacity or supporting print or online journalism to create great graphics to accompany different stories or news pieces. Data visualization analyst roles can be a good option for people that don't wanna do a lot of programming. While it can be really helpful to know how to do it, the majority of the jobs that specialize just in data visualization focus more around intuitive interfaces like Tableau where you don't need to know really any programming to be very effective and very good at your job, 
with visualizing data within them. Those are a few different interesting data analyst roles. There's certainly many more, dozens if not hundreds of specific niches that deal with all different sorts of specialized focus areas or specialized backgrounds, making some people more suited than others for them. If you're interested in analytics, but the general profile doesn't exactly appeal to you, there's probably a niche area out there that is a better fit for you. So where we have data visualization as something that's less programming heavy, we also have the marketing, healthcare, and many, many other areas. If you're interested in analytics, check out my free quiz where you'll answer about a dozen questions and it will automatically tell you what the best type of analytics position is likely to be for you. You can find the link down in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.